I want to do a mic drop, but I can't. It's on a boom. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? 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 Yes. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <sighs> okay. Hello. Welcome. Oh, to the Home Assistant Release Party 2024.3. Sorry, Alex. Three. Three. <laughs> Three. <laughs> so this week is March. Um, and it's a great release. It has a lot of really cool features that we've worked on for a really long time. Um, but before we dig in, Let's do a quick uh, introduction round. My name is Paulus Schoutse. I'm the founder of Home Assistant. Oh, shit. Well, I guess that's <laughs> the special reveal. <laughs> Dramatic lighting. Good to be back on the air. Um, hi, um, Madalena. Uh, I'm here to help lead the product and design for Home Assistant. Hello, I'm Paul. I work as a front-end developer for Navicasa on the Home Assistant front-end. And uh, I also maintain the Mushroom custom car. Mm. He does, by the way. Big fan. Uh, hi, I'm Frank. And uh, well, I run around the Home System project for ages now. I'm doing the releases. So, uh, yeah. hi. Hello, Frank. <laughs> back from holiday, Frank. Uh, yeah, actually, I got back yesterday uh, oh. or got back to work yesterday. Uh, which uh, so I will be around asking most of the questions, I guess. I haven't been around during beta. Uh, so I, I was really surprised to see a bunch of stuff landing in this release, by the way. Uh, it is, it, it is, this is the big one. It's the big one. Uh, I guess most people have seen the live stream from Madalena and Paul last week. I hope if you haven't, do it after this one. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. And don't see <laughs> I, I, I look back uh, yesterday uh, because I wanted to know what we were talking about, right? And uh, anyways, it, it, this is this is the release of releases. This is the thing we have been waiting for for ages. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So, uh, dashboards, right? So we like. <laughs> so obviously, we're not going to redo the whole last stream, but yeah, we're going to three hours long. <laughs> we're having a good. <laughs> Let, but let's kick it off with dashboards because people have been waiting uh, for a long time. It makes no sense to do anything else, in my yeah. opinion. So where do we start? Let's do it. Mm, Just it's show down. it. Yeah. Yeah. Show <laughs> it. Show it what it's all about. Come so, on. My, my lady, do you want to see your screen? I think you have something prepared. Oh, I, I have power. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have a if you want. Yes. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> We're so well prepared for our live streams. So you can see. I, you know, I'm, I'm so focused on the CSV download feature. Preparing yeah, that. That is feature. the biggest feature. <laughs> oh, we got another one. That's true. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think Ooh. Like yeah. Ooh. Yeah. This looks like a different 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 application. Yeah. Is yeah. this home assistant? <laughs> yeah, it's the same. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. quick, quick tell. What are we looking at? Yeah, what are we looking at? Oh yeah. So this is the brand new section view layout type. Um, that is available in this uh, new this release is an experimental feature right now. Uh, we are pushing this out early so that we can like get your feedback and um, iterate, you know, with all of you, uh, you know, in the open and like see what works and what doesn't work. Uh, try not to build your permanent dashboard on this yet, even though it's really easy to do it. Uh, but it's really cool. And uh, we, we created this layout uh, for a few reasons. So uh, in, in the live stream, we talk about like, we have like the panel view, the cyber view and masonry view layouts. And after like months of research and um, also ideation, we figured out that like masonry doesn't really work with drag and drop very well. And we figured that we need a better solution. So we come up with sections. So section is like we look at a lot of people's uh, users' dashboards and realize that people like to group things together. 
And the good thing about grouping things together is if you resize the screen, the tiles remain uh, relatively like close to each other, no matter how much like you you move things around. So, for example, uh, if you see the at the top right, there's a spotlight for the kitchen and a shutter. If you make the screen narrower, um, the the spotlight and the shutter will still be next to each other, even they shift down to the next row. So. This, I mean, this was always the big pain, right? We had the masonry. Yeah. You resize the screen, like you build it on your desktop. You go to mobile, cars jumping around. Yeah. Um, we had this. We had the the arrows. You would press the arrow up, the car would go to the left, to the right. You'd like it's kind of a, a lottery, and yep. that's all. Yeah, it was not predictable at all. Yeah. yeah, it's unpredictable, and you don't because like if you like you can't really build the same dashboard for multiple screens with uh, masonry because. The cards will land everywhere, like you don't, you cannot predict. So um, for this one, there's a lot more predictable, and it we we would try to save, we're trying to save uh, our users' time essentially, so that you don't need to build your dashboard three times for your phones, uh, for your tablets, and also for your like 50 inch like home assistant dashboard mounted in. The <laughs> So, so we've yeah. been looking at this, Paul, right now. Um, obviously, you're showing us the tile cards. Uh, that we've yeah, been and on. it's on the demo yeah. website if you want. To oh, this is, uh, yeah, this is actually cool. We've updated the Home Assistant demo. If you go to demo.homeassistant.io or go mm -hmm. to the Home Assistant website, click on demo, you can actually play with this right now while you're waiting yeah. for the release to drop because we had a little hiccup. The release is coming. It's going to take a couple of hours, uh, probably still. So... Check out the demo um, to uh, to play with it right now if you can't wait. Um, yeah, but yeah. So yeah. Paul, show show is like you know you, you're obviously looking at it now. We're seeing the tile cards yeah. since. So you can edit uh, even on the demo. You can edit it, uh, but when you will refresh the page, it will uh, your change will be lost. But uh, yeah, it's nice to to play with it. Um, so you have section it's like a grid card but uh, you can uh, you can edit the card directly from the from the main view you don't have to go to nested dialogue and uh, click on the number of your card to see where it is and uh, yeah so and, and this, life this is this is the bio it's funny. it's like this is one of those improvements that is you know once you start using it it's like i cannot go back right like yeah. i was in a horizontal stack and it's like i'm inside the edit dialogue mm. seeing numbers where i get like nested yeah. edit dialogues i'm like what the hell yeah yeah i mean like drag and drop has been around for a long time right like mac os system for like windows 3.1 had that so but what did really is unique here is that like it's really hard to make a dashboard that works for different screen size and after you resize them and things still stay where they are and uh, and I think like the the cool thing about drag and drop really like as a as a UI design for so many years is that like it's so simple that really no steps need to explain how to really use it. You just drag and drop like, and it seems so simple that you think it's very easy to design and engineer, but it turns out it's a whole mess of uh, yeah. yeah. So we can start dragging this card and put it here. And uh, it's uh, so simple now. You don't have to deal with the uh, arrow, and uh, you just have to drag it. And even even for big card, it works too. <laughs> this is what I like a lot, right? Like it's not just small cards. Any any card, any size can be dragged and dropped, and like it just pushes away everything. No, but that is that is like uh, the the markdown card, right? So that thing is like flexible and height. It will just like adapt to it. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, so any any card that is not meant, ready, prepared for the grid, and right mm -hmm. now the only tile, sensor, and button card that have been prepared for the grid, will just spend the whole width of a section and then take as much height as it needs because that's how the old system used to work, right? You just take <laughs> as much height. You don't uh, honor the grid. Um, right. Yeah, that means it looks actually really good with every type of card right now. Yeah, yeah. And and in future we'll try to like adjust and make sure all the cards also fit with the grids too. So like everything will yeah. be very tidy and fit nicely. 
But uh, I like for that. right I now, like demos with a developer console. That's the best. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right now, really uh, cool there are three types of card that works. Right, there's the sensor card, which you see with the chart and with the temperature, twenty one two degrees. The tile cards all works, and if you add features to it, it will adjust accordingly. And also, button card works too. Yeah, for so, this one, if I add a, like a feature, it will take more space on the automatically. It will take two rows instead of one. I mean, this the, the the way the features integrate with the grid system is is really nice because you can see how the two tile cards right next to one tile card with a feature line up perfectly, right? So it's really it will be easy to get memory muscle of where your certain sections are and how easy it is to like scan for the right devices. So uh, some someone asked about like whether they can resize the cards or not. Um, right now, there's no way to directly resize it yet. But yeah, if you add features to a tile card, you can make it taller, essentially. But uh, in future, we definitely want to look into like how to make it more yeah. intuitive. Yeah. To, well, to, to be honest, we're only going to look at it if you like and subscribe, right? So oh, that's true. Really? Yeah. <laughs> we have Hit like... that like button on YouTube or Facebook yeah. or wherever you're watching this. And uh... yeah, we have six, 1,600 people watching. Then uh, yeah. how many likes we have? Convince <laughs> uh, <laughs> us uh, to make too, too few, cards too few. resizable in the grid. <laughs> um, so I, I saw a good question okay. here. Um, which is, uh, mm -hmm. will Lovelace stay around forever or will we lose uh, Lovelace dashboards in long term? So, it's not um, a drop for, uh, for Lovelace, it's uh, just an improvement. Uh, as you as you know, if you yeah. look at the configuration, we, we only added like a, a section between views and cards, but uh, it, it, so it's, it's, it might it's be... the same foundation. Yeah. It might be good to tell about Lovelace, right? Lovelace was originally the code name of our new dashboarding system back in the mm -hmm. day. And the name stuck around, yeah, well, it, it sticked around for a long time. Um, and we actually stopped using that name a lot. It's still there in the source code. Like you can find the term Lovelace or the name Lovelace in the source code on some places, but we don't use the term Lovelace anywhere else anymore. It's just our dashboarding system. It's dashboards, right? Um, and the same is with Project Grace. It's a project name uh, as it started internally as like Project Grace because, well, just like Ada Lovelace, um, she, she has been uh, uh, important in uh, the computer industry. Uh, so that's how Grace was born, Project Grace was born. Um, and this is built on top of our existing Lovelace, right? Or of, on our existing <clears throat> dashboarding that exists. So is Lovelace going away? Well, actually, it's it's not even really there. But uh, <laughs> yeah, nothing changed, right? It's just yeah, it's it's, it's very the... important. It's it's very important for us that we can't just like introduce a new dashboard and throw yeah. away years of custom cards. <laughs> no. Like, ah, uh, sorry, we got like a slightly different grid right now. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah, that, that yeah. won't work. No. And yeah, talking every, about that, yeah, every custom card go. is compatible with this new dashboard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just tried. I'm currently like doing what you're doing, basically on my system, and playing with it for the first time. And I'm just like adding like some huge card in here, which is custom, which just works. Yeah, and Mushroom awesome. is updated uh, since yesterday, so it will automatically resize depending of the layout you choose for your uh, Mushroom card. Yeah, like the tile card. And we will provide a, a way for custom card developer to 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 automatically resize the card depending on feature and configuration. So we will post a blog post uh, on it. Uh, yeah. yeah. So the they can specify days. how many rows yeah. and columns that it would take. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember. Can... Oh, oh. oh, sorry. I remember when we first got together, and uh, the first thing that we do as an icebreaker is the what should we call this project? And uh, then we came up with many like prominent like women in tech, and then we finally like, yes, and on and on Grace, it it sounds great. It rhymes with Lovelace, and also Grace Hopper is amazing. And Admiral mathematician, a great inventor, everything. So definitely look her up and like what she did. <laughs> Her lectures on YouTube are awesome. <laughs> yeah, 
hesitancy, mm. uh, for example, uh, horizontal stack work too. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh. Like oh. The horizontal yeah. card. Uh, yeah, horizontal but it will stack. be nested, but uh, yeah, every card works. I think the, the horizontal stack right now is actually a nice hack in case you want to have your tile card spend the whole width. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess. <laughs> But that's that's a good remark in general, right? This is like a preview feature. This is experimental. This is now here uh, for all of you to use, at least as soon as the release is available today, uh, later today. But um, yeah, you can all play with this, but it is experimental and it is expected to be developed. We're looking forward to you using it and playing with it and seeing what you think and, and what you run into and how you... Yeah think it can be improved or what should be added or should be removed maybe even i don't know um, but in the end this is the home assistant level we always do right we ship stuff quick and as early as possible in in a minimal viable product stage so you can start playing with it so we get early feedback and can build with you together so um if you start using this, please, please be bear in mind it is experimental and things might break ahead if we are going to uh, uh, improve on this, like work on this more. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, where can we leave feedback? Um, Good question. Uh, right now, we don't have a dedicated forum to dashboards, but uh, usually people leave feedback on uh, in the comments on the blog post about uh, Project Grace. Right now, you know, there there are two. Um, two blog posts on that. There's a recent one that was published on Monday. So feel free to add anything you find on that post. Well, and also, I mean, if you, depending on uh, how you want to get involved, we also have a UX, a devs UX channel oh, on yeah. Discord, on Home yeah. Assistant Discord. So if you are more on the UX side, you want to discuss like section widths, heights, grid, <laughs> um, all that stuff super interests you, definitely uh, join us as well. I think during the, the last live stream, we already like, I think we showed a screenshot of like a sneak peek of the kind of things we're thinking about more. I mean, Paul just showed how to add badges. The existing badges look out of place in this kind of dashboard, especially with the tile card looking so yeah. flat and the, the badges are just, it looks, it feels very old all of a sudden. So there, there's things are going to change uh, a lot. Not while well, uh, yeah. um, well, well, also a lot around one... the other things, not so much, or maybe we don't know. Right. I think that's the main you know, if people start using it today and it breaks, like it doesn't work for them, we'll change it. If it works perfectly, we have flawless, then this will like, you know, be it. And we'll keep iterating and improving, of course, other stuff than just the grid. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, one more thing is I would love to add. It's uh, that we have, uh, oh, sorry. We have uh, set up a user research group, which means that, uh, we uh we're gonna send out user tests and uh, get your opinion and feedback like like once in a while so we'll send up like like if we have any design like we have to make some hard design decisions we will send out design surveys we will send out like some you know a b tests and all that kind of stuff and just see how how you think about and get a sneak peek of like what's going on and uh, what we're trying to build so uh definitely like please uh to click that link and uh, sign up in our, our user testing group and be part of our design process. Yes. Mm. Okay. So I like the suggestion in the chat. Frank should go on a holiday more often. <laughs> then stuff happens. I, I fully agree. I should. <laughs> well, I mean, like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. The copy paste is also nice. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, you can Good. copy piece. Actually, the feature, Paul, you haven't shown my favorite feature of this. This one? Yeah. So when you click, oh. uh, I will go on my uh, English dashboard because the demo is in French because my browser uh, <laughs> yeah. is French. But, uh, you click add yeah. card, you can, you know, as always, you could pick multiple entities, right? But it used to throw you into an entities card or something. But now, to do do do. You, you know, let's say you select, well, pause. Oh, the shutters. Wow, you have a lot of blinds in your house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a dark person then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, so, but this is really great because you can select all really... the ones that are the ones you want to select and they just add it as individual cards. So it will make it super fast to build up a new dashboard with this. 
Yeah, and, and we course. we suggest the uh, tile cards by default if you're using sections view. Yeah, which makes a lot of sense though. Do the uh, do the uh, old. Uh, and this one too. Oh, oh, hear me out. I say old already. Do the um, uh, entities cards like the entity list stuff? Does that work in the new dashboard actually? It works too. Like that was what we've used to be using, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. You can in here. This example is you can go to a device page and you can use all those add to dashboard link. If you yeah, have never good. used it, this is actually very cool and useful. Yeah, and uh, we will also suggest tilecards for you, and yeah. we'll automatically group them as a section for you under with all those things. So just now we have the heat pump mm -hmm. device. Now all those sensors from the heat pump is That's right cool. there in one section. Yeah. Ta -da. <laughs> So yeah, if I, do work, I think, uh... how would I know what part, like in general, when I go on mobile, right? And then like all of a sudden, like everything is quashed. What would now exactly happen, right? Because on the top right, we have energy and then kitchen. But build previously, that was like um, N-based or Z-based. No, masonry based. So no, but, but masonry is a special algorithm, and uh, mm -hmm. we stack up based on size to fill the gap. And uh, yeah, but for right. now, so where would energy go then? Uh, energy will go. We don't have space here, so energy will be here. Yeah. So we follow the Z shape, right? Oh so yeah. So yeah. right. So it will be the third one. Yeah. 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 So right. That's it, the the order essentially. It goes from left to right first, and then once it's filled up, um, I'm sorry. Then then it will like go to the next row essentially. And what and, is nice uh, here is that like you put your important sections on top right. on the top the other the top row. They you go a bit smaller. They will be the top two rows yeah. until like you know that. Yes, yeah, so and then so even like, on mobile, they will be somewhat on the top and still in the same priority. Yeah. Okay. All right. Like, yeah, it okay, would be somewhat time. still related uh, in the order. So things on the second row will be somewhere in the middle, no matter what. Yeah. Right. Ding -ding. Awesome. Right. Paul, can you show uh, hiding a title from a section? Because that okay. yeah. also works. The, the title of a section is exactly one row in the grid. So yep. if you hit done, it will actually shift up. And you see it exactly still all and the cards. Uh, also, mm. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Very neat. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Someone asked. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <right>. Jinx. Mm. <laughs> I just want to see drag and drop one more time. Can we drag and drop between section and drag and drop yeah. cards? And... Yeah. You can drag and drop within the section and you can crew across sections. Uh, can you, can you drag it on the sensor card because it moves more stuff. I like that more. Oh, yeah, the big ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it moves that. more, so that's better. <laughs> yeah. Moves yeah. that graph around then, right? And you oh, can God. drag, drag the entire good. section. Oh, look at that. So, yeah, the year is done. Um, this was it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you're the dashboard. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we delivered. Um, check that box. Yeah. How how long was the drag and drop a wish list item? By the way, I've I've not looked it up. Like I know four years ago when we did the first month of what the hack, it was already a big thing. Yeah. Probably been around forever, right? Like just yeah. I don't I don't remember since it. the first designs from Polus. Uh, <laughs> maybe <laughs> At the, this old stage dashboard, right? Yeah. Yeah, the old yeah. stage one. Oh, that thing was horrible, by the way. No, yeah, that it was one good. Was... It, it was worked. It worked right, but it was horrible to maintain. I mean, I feel oh, like wow. every time you go to the next generation, right? You look back and we're like, "Oh wow, this is such a big improvement." Yeah. yeah. Someone in yeah, the, the comments mentioned that they need to restart the machine every time when they use the old dashboard. Is that true? Yeah. Previously, pre back in the days when we had the old stage dashboard. The dashboard was generated based on the items it found in your system. So if you want to hide stuff or group stuff, you would actually make actual groups in YAML. Yeah. Um, and and in order to load YAML, you had to restart. There was no reload option, no. only a restart yeah. option. Don't forget, you had to to hide stuff. You had to add a custom attribute hidden through <laughs> using customize. And like customize yeah. the biggest hack in home assistant history oh, that God. luckily not a lot of people know about anymore. But yeah. <laughs> 
So those were the days. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not. Problem. This is so much better. Technically, yes. Practically, it depends on the size of the card. I would say I've had yeah. some hits and misses. It doesn't always feel good. It doesn't drag yeah. and scroll yet, right? If you go to mm -hmm. like drag it to the bottom of the page, does it scroll down? <laughs> Grandpa, tell me more about the early days. Oh god! Yeah, you can drag so... and drop on mobile, but we we have some technical limitation for it. So yeah, yeah the when... the arrow we will try to improve it, but it's not perfect for now. We we're trying to figure something out essentially. Yeah, and and there are better ways than dragging all the way down. The on mobile uh, doesn't work well because you don't see other sections. So we we need to find a way to. To reorder section on mobile easily, uh, maybe the way we do for Aria for uh, the default dashboard or something like that, uh, or with Arrow, but people don't like Arrow, so I'm not sure. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, okay, it's a, yeah. another design design puzzle to solve. Yeah, um, some people suggest that too. So um, there, there's no Control C right now, but no. yeah, keep the suggestion coming. Like like these yeah, ones are great. One um but oh, yeah it's, it's right. not in yet but yeah we would love your ideas <laughs> yeah. oh select multiple and drag and drop like multiple at the same time so oh, multi yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah I, I, I think the the technology we use uh art is support so we have to to look at that yeah. maybe it's possible yeah so uh yeah this is only and the copy pass multiple one. card uh, too. Yeah, yeah. So, so dashboard is still work in progress. We are not done yet. <laughs> yes, um, there's yeah. still a lot ahead. Like we're gonna get your feedback and then figure out all these details that we you just saw, and then like allow resizing cards. You know, we're gonna improve other cards to fit with the grid as well. So yeah, stay tuned. We'll have more live streams on these. Yeah, and as you can see, we're iterating in the open, so definitely. Uh... <laughs> you know, give your feedback, definitely. build and start build. If you're a custom card author, try playing with this, see how your custom card fits in. I think it will be cool to see other cards also starting to leverage the grid system. Is it always reads columns? So mm -hmm. we have like a minimum and maximum width of each section. So depending on the screen width, it will adjust accordingly. Yeah. So for example, yeah, I have four columns. Mm, is it editable in YAML? <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, yes. But you can you can do only do it in UI mode, right? Not in YAML mode, because it wouldn't save any order changes. Uh, yeah, 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 it probably. wouldn't be drag and drop ball. The section would work. Yeah. yeah, I think the section would if you if you have a full YAML dashboard, yeah. Yeah. So all the all the card definitions are the same between this view and the old view, right? So the the the, the masonry layout. So if you're using YAML, it will look very familiar. You just have to have a new construct between a view and a card, which we call the section, right? And if you do that, it will all feel uh, feel good. Uh, will custom <clears throat> components be able to use drag and drop grid features? I mean, I can I can show my experimental dashboard, oh, <laughs> my yeah. my own theme. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yeah, show it. De -de 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 um, let me see if I can. While we're waiting, it. can I do a quick update on the release because people are yeah. asking and pinging me about it, but that's fine. <laughs> we <laughs> uh, we had a little hiccup doing the release, and unfortunately, that causes that caused it to be not available right now. Um, the issue should have been fixed at this point, but it means we had to restart the builds, which means it will take about an hour and a half at this point. Um, so it should be available in an hour and a half from now if everything goes right. So um, if you want to play with it, go to our demo website, demo.homeassistant.io. You can play with the dashboards already or wait an hour and a half and then you can upgrade and knock yeah. yourself out on your own system. Ooh. So yeah, this is my own theme and uh... Button cards and everything. Uh, somehow it still works. I'm <laughs> actually surprised that it works. <laughs> like everything is in a different love, shape. Nice. I love so the cool. music player uh, you have, uh, Malena. Oh, yeah, I, I'm playing St. Vincent, which is awesome. But yes. And if you want to edit a card, <laughs> you can click on it and uh, you see the YAML. I love these tiny button cards, are all in like little squares. 
and they just somehow all know how to fit in the right place. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's awesome. It uh, it it might not work fully, but you know, this has card mod and all that those things on, but you know. <laughs> uh, let us know if it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Ding. Uh, do we have another question? Oh, this is a good question for you, Paul. Strategies. Mm. Mm. Yeah, oh. it's you, you, you. For now, we have uh, two type of strategy. We have dashboard strategy and view strategy. And with this release, we also introduce section strategy. It, yeah, it's not used, but not documented. But uh, yeah, you will be able to to create a, a strategy to generate your dashboard, or generate a view, or uh, just generate a, a section using a strategy. Yeah. So just recap yeah. one step back for people. Yeah, that maybe we can explain what is a strategy. Are. Yeah. <laughs> strategies is a bit of custom JavaScript that you can ship with custom cards or you can yeah. distribute. Um, and it allows you to generate uh, configuration for the dashboard on the fly based on yeah. like options or parameters. So for example, you could have a strategy that looks at the areas that you have and automatically generate a dashboard for you. In fact, that's actually how the default dashboard is implemented. So with this release, being able to put this on a section level means that you could have a section point at Give me the content of a card or give me all the light groups or whatever like it's at, at every level of the dashboard uh cards of course of custom cards but sections views and then the whole dashboard itself you can have uh, a strategy and uh yeah build it out dynamically yeah i mean in our documentations we're changing the name it's going to be dashboard blueprints right because it's essentially yeah. a blueprint just like automations or script blueprints yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, um, ex I mean, the strategies is actually like sections is actually a step towards this ultimate goal is that we want to be able to build like auto auto generate dashboards like that with sections and then, and so this is a building block, the first building yeah. block towards that. Eventually, um, yeah. everything will be greasified. Yeah. Uh, sections um, without a card become place that yes, they will just yeah. uh, be an empty block. That yeah, one is easy. Move. Yeah, you just move that to the middle. And you will have a giant gap. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's oh. a big gap, though. Yeah. But oh. yeah, can be useful, maybe. Yeah. No, that, this one is a great question. Team Rocket, guys, thank you. Uh, keep catching your Pokemon and also uh, join <laughs> sign up for Navi Castle Club. Yeah, because that, that's actually great, uh, a great leap way. Um, home Assistant, yeah. Home Assistant, you know, how how is it that we are working on Home Assistant full time and giving all of this, building open source, giving it away to you for free? Um, and that's because we are all employed by Nabucasa. So I started Home Assistant 10 and a half years ago, five and a half years ago, we started Nabucasa. With Nabucasa, we have a service called Home Assistant Cloud. It uh, gives you end-to-end -end encrypted connections uh, to connect to Home Assistant, integration with Google, Amazon, and have uh, excellent voices and speech-to-text for our own voice assistant, and you support the development of Home Assistant. So it allows us to actually sit down, do the good research, talk to people, think about, build out like all the features that you see today, all the features that are coming. And of course, we don't do this ourselves. We do this with the community. But given that we're the second most active open source project in the world, we need a lot of manpower uh, just to work with people and like, you know, keep the this massive machine going. So both we work on bigger features that then we work together with the community like now to further develop. We work with the community to build out their contributions get that merged into Home Assistant. And that's all thanks to the support of people like you who are signed up to Home Assistant Cloud and, you know, help make this possible. Yeah, thank you, Team Rocket, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely please subscribe. Not, not just like and subscribe, but subscribe, subscribe, Home Assistant yeah. Cloud. <laughs> Um, this is an important notice uh, from Thomas uh, because I know a lot of people use layout card and button card and all that stuff. So uh, yeah, if you if you update it, there's, uh, there can be backward compatibility issues. So 
uh, make sure for those like who want to build like crazy advanced dashboards, the, the, that's, that's something that you need to be aware of. Thank you, Thomas. So maybe just to kind of wrap up this segment because there's oh, other yeah. features in this release that oh, are yeah. more cool. you think yeah, way way more important. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I think no. this is kind of interesting. Maybe um, Malena. Yeah. So uh, yeah, if you uh, go check out our stream for a, a, the great uh, uh, auto generated. Oh no, sorry. Home approved dashboard chapter one. Yes, you you should be able to see. Um, the, the we talk about the roadmap a little bit so yeah we 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 have something in the pipeline um we're not entirely sure what exactly it would be yet so that's why we're collecting feedback we have a pretty good idea what our end goal would be but uh the steps in between uh, definitely help us prioritize uh, which one we should do first because there are a lot of awesome yes. things we can work on install it play with it and let us know that's yeah. the that's how it is works right if, eventually yeah. Besides what we want and can do, we're dying to know how you guys think about this. That's a home assistant way we uh, iterate out in the open. No, no yep. secret development and all that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're back. Wow, twenty six hundred. Uh... <laughs> oh I don't yeah, think we're really using it for this week. This was it for this release. Hope you yeah, enjoyed. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you it might be, uh, <laughs> before we continue, um, there's yeah. still so if you like to work on Home Assistant, we still have some job openings open as well for a couple oh. of uh, we uh, we had uh, a bunch of job openings open. Some of them actually closed uh, at the uh, beginning of March. We are going through all the applications. We got a lot of applications. We're making sure we do our due diligence, uh, filter through it, reach out to people. Um, but we still have some engineering jobs open. So if you like Python, if you like front end, hit us up. Please. And yes. And if you like Android, stay tuned. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> Coming, not online yet. Yeah. Coming soon. Yes. We definitely need an Android development. <laughs> I just want to. Somebody's asking why Paul has a mushroom emoji. It's because Paul is the creator of the custom mushroom cards. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. All right. And Frank is a creator too. spook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm it's just mimicking Paul. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just mimicking Paul. Anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Frank, your screen, my screen. Uh, what's what's on your screen? I don't know. Like, I have, I, well, I prepared a demo for the next feature that I think we're going to oh. talk about. Uh, oh, oh, right. This is the release party as well, right? Um, <laughs> we have some, some we have yeah, something else in here. Yes, uh, I think you're going to talk about either of two. Both are good. Show it. I okay, don't know. No. Let's see. Let's swing it. The most Ooh, important oh. feature. No, that's, that's not it. I think he is going to talk about scripts. Scripts, yeah. So yeah. I was, um, uh, you know, uh, we have a big yeah. active subreddit, and I was on that subreddit, and somebody had posted a question saying, like, I want to track my weight in Google Sheets through Home Assistant. How do I do that? And you know, home automation, we're a dashboard. Sure, we can. This this is possible, right? So we have a Google Sheets integration. We have um, ways to send data to it, but then. You know, I, I just, you know, I was just casually browsing it. So I posted a comment like, oh, just add an input text to your dashboard and then like have a button that reads a text from the input text, send it to your Google Sheet service and voila. And the person was like responding, uh, do you maybe have a tutorial? I was like, oh yeah, that does sound a little complicated. And, and it made me think like, this is actually weird, right? To get user input, you need to build up basically all form components as entities, put them in your dashboard where they're taking up space. And so you have like, are you always want to have a full form right there in your dashboard? Also, given that with the new sections layout, you know, we're trying to reduce the kind of space that we give each device. So it didn't make much sense. So I was like, we should just put this in a dialogue. And then I was like, are we going to put dashboards in dialogues? No, that's, that's going to be crazy. Uh, plus, I don't have that much time. Um, so. <laughs> oh, God, you made a one hour project. I feel it. <laughs> Yeah, and you prefer to cut than the writing tutorial. <laughs> yeah. 
But then I realized that uh, Carl was like last November made a feature to like we had so let me go three steps back. So we have scripts in Home Assistant. This allows you to like get a bunch of actions in a row, and basically it's the action part of an automation, but you can only trigger it through a service call or pressing on it, like the run button on it in Home Assistant. And scripts are actually awesome. Scripts are awesome because you know if you do five times, then you know you can group it together. Then to make scripts more useful, the moment you trigger it, we allow you to pass data to it. So for example, I have a script to play a song uh, on a media player, but it doesn't know which song yet. It depends on the kind of URL I pass in, but then it has all the media player configured and all that stuff. Now, scripts have fields. That's how you pass data to it. And in November, Carlos added a feature to edit the to explain which fields you expect for your script in the UI, in the script editor. And so I am going to share my screen and I'm going to actually open the script editor first. Um, I'm actually making sure that my, yeah. There you go. So this is my, uh, my uh, home assistant. Now, if you create a new script, you can click here and you click add field. So let's say I'm making a new script to add an item to my to-do list. And so just so you know, this is an advanced feature to write, deal with input data to your scripts because you need to use templates, right? And to use templates to pass the data around, you basically end up in YAML. Um, it's not scary, but it's just something to know. Now I'm writing a script, it's a to-do, um, great. I'm gonna add a field and I'm gonna say, the field that I want to add is called the item. So this is the item that you want to add. Now here you can actually say what kind of data does this field has to be. And this is how it will be represented in the UI. So you can say, I need a target. You'll get a target picker. You can say, um, I want the time. You get a time picker. It's the select selector. There's, you can do anything that you allow selecting a home assistant, which is actually really cool because you say, oh, you want media? You can actually pick a media player and all that stuff, right? Like it actually gets very advanced, this, the kind of stuff you can select because this is the stuff, this is the way home assistant actually functions. So in this case, um, we are, of course, adding a to-do item. So we're just going to go for text. There are some extra options available. Not all options that you can do in YAML are actually available in the UI that might get fixed in the future. But um, for here, it's multiple. Can you usually put in one piece of text, multiple pieces of text? Can it be a multi-line? So in that case, you can already see the default value here. It will become a text area because you can add like new lines. So in this case, I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm adding an item called item. Maybe I should like, I'll, I'll just call it to-do item just because, um, oh, this is the name. So. I call it to-do item. This is the variable name will be called item or to-do item, that's great. Now in my action, I'm going to tie this to a existing to-do list. So I'm searching for to-do, I'm looking at add to-do list item. Now I'm just gonna add some stupid in here because if you go to YAML, now this is where the magic happens. I can just put in the variable name and this will work. So what happens now, I've saved the script. When I click on run script, previously it would fail because I didn't put any field. Now. Right, it would give that error. It's too yeah, me just refer. There you go. It is not failing. It opens the more info of the script. And you can see, oh, I didn't mark it as uh, required. So you can see there's a checkbox. Um, that's a bit annoying. So let's. Mark it as required. Safe script, run script. Is it gonna work? Oh, I'm just gonna. That's a little bug. I noticed it the other day. Um, we'll fix that. So now I have. I can add stuff to my to do uh, right here from this dialog. So I've made a form that we can open anywhere we can open a script. So hmm. I know I want to buy beer. I click run. I messed it up. Oh no, oh, I have Oh, because you didn't. Uh... I didn't put it in the top. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh. OK, then I'm just going to quickly change back to the visual editor. I'm going to add my to-do list. Then I'm quickly going back to YAML to inject my template like a pro. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure when you write templates, always put in quotes. 
Otherwise, yeah. uh, it will fade. Now, run script, bear, boom. It's added to my oh, to-do list. That's totally a to-do list. Uh-oh. I'm excited. Oh. Is it here? Bear, bear, it bear, 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 bear. No, here, bear. <laughs> <laughs> you like bear a lot, by the way. Yeah. I see you had a lot of beer to shop still. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> beer, the way bear, it's beer. so cool is that if you add this actually to a dashboard, so for example, here I have an add chore. This will be uh, adding into my shopping list. Actually, um, if I open it, you cannot see it. So let me just quickly drag and drop this over here. <laughs> so you can see this number will go, uh, you know, I'll add it, boom. It has updated now, right? And I click on it, it will open my to-do list and wine is there. Just like that. Of course, you can have anything you want to add to your dashboard, like any form, like you can, any, like I, of course, this is just an easy, let's uh, track a to-do item. But this is, for example, one, hey, announce something on uh, throughout the house. So it's like, for example, uh, time for dinner. You can click run. And this is set up to actually use text-to-speech, send it to the media players that I want to use for announcing things in the house. Time for dinner. Whoa. Exactly. That's what I wanted to say. I can make a, a broadcaster announcer, announcer kind of. Yeah. Thing. Nice. That's a surprise. Wow. Well, it's actually really cool now with this is that because you know it's scripts and we have had scripts in Home Assistant for a long time. We actually have script blueprints, so it's easy to share scripts. So one of the bonus things that we did in this release is that I actually these two things I just showed we're including as blueprints in your that you can just click so and install and add to your Home Assistant. So if you want to announce it, you can import this blueprint into Home Assistant. It will allow you to select a media player. It will create then the script for you, and then you add it to your dashboard, and you will get exactly the experience that I just showed you. The same with the add to to-do list. Um, the to-do list one is actually nice because I changed it up, but you can also change the name for the, the label that you kind of give in your form, right? So as a... Um, which is a nice little touch. So this is the blueprint, right? The add to do. You pick your shopping list, you pick your label, and that's it. Like it adds that button to your dashboard. And this one, you use your text to speech engine. I use, of course, Home Assistant Cloud. Um, over 130 different uh, languages and accents. It's really cool, high quality. Um, and then you pick your media players. You can pick multiple media players. I've only picked the one in the office now for uh, this demo, but I would normally pick like living room, bedrooms, all that stuff. Um, yeah, it's really cool. It's really flexible and really ties together like a lot of features that we've had in Home Assistant yeah. and makes it super easy and accessible. Yeah, in my opinion, this is a huge feature because like with this interface, you can really like have it's like an entire interface builder. You can build an app our home assistant. Yeah. Oh, I just realized I did. I was, um, I was showing the script editor here, but I didn't show. Uh, I was not sharing this tab. This is if you add this blue, added this blueprint, you can actually see that the to do list is there, uh, the chore is there, um, so the label. And I'll just quickly show this one again. This is what I get for putting all my screens on top of each other. You can pick the text speech engine. You can pick the the entities that you want. So, really, really cool. I can't wait I to in, see more blueprints. Yeah. I oh, think sorry. in general, scripts are so underrated, right? Like we're all used to making automations. Uh, like, and if scripts feel scary, but you're used to making automations, then there's really no difference. Yeah. As in the whole action list part of a script is or of an automation is a script the script is basically an automation without a triggering condition um and they allow you to reuse parts on multiple places even other automations so if you have like i don't know an, a, a sequence on doing an announcement somewhere in your home and you use that in multiple automations make it a script and call that script from the several automations. So you have only one part to maintain. <clears throat> it's really building blocks for your home assistant system. And with this, yeah, this is this is a cool addition to that. Yeah. 100%. I really, uh, I like this uh, comment from Petro. It's like, yeah, I spent hours making UIs. Don't need them anymore. Yep. Like it's, it's again, you know, we make something easier and it's like, it helps a lot of people. Um, yep. 
I want to see this come. Now I need a way to open the dialog from another screen. The cool thing is that this dialog is actually the script more info dialog. So let me just share my screen one more time. This is, of course, Home Assistant. Mm. Now, every time we show this, people are going to be like, whoa, I didn't realize this. But if you hit the letter E, just, boom, it shows you the entities, <laughs> right? So I have the, the at groceries or the at chore. I open it. It's right there. Now, of course, you can also hit the search button, um, but you have to hit backspace once. And you can also uh, add an item to your to-do list. So there's multiple ways to achieve this. But yeah, on any page you are in Home Assistant, just hit the letter E. Boom. You have access to it. Oh, what's that? <laughs> oh, it's the custom layout that is, uh, yeah. Yeah. So script input fields. Thank you. Wait, I don't hear you, Frank. Sorry, I was muted. Um, <laughs> no, that this is a nice addition and a nice project you had done there, by the way. This was a nice surprise to see. Yeah, it was not a one hour cool. project, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's with every one hour project, it never ends up being a one hour project. <laughs> yeah. It was a weekend project, I think. <laughs> yeah, this was, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think is it like one hour project is like yeah the proof of concept was one hour and then like Madalena was like this is ugly and then like one hour project <laughs> I like one hour projects we had like this is a part of history of home assistant we had so many one hour projects in the past like this is a good idea we can just do this really quick let's make it a one hour project and sometimes we ended up doing it a whole month to finish that one hour project. Uh, <laughs> nevertheless, it's the, it's like the that's how good ideas are born, I guess. I think that resonates for a lot of people contributing to Home yeah. Assistant as well, right? You have a good idea and you start digging into it and then make it perfect. And eventually it ends up somewhere. It's just cool. Thank you. Very cool addition. Definitely have some use cases for that myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's up next? Yeah. I don't do you know. want to? I I I, I can. Uh, shall I do a little segue then into a new feature? Yeah. You want to share your screen? Uh, I think I have something to share. Let me switch to this tab. Um, this is, by the way, also the demo which I'm going to show in that case. Yeah, I also have a demo if you. Yo, you know what I want to show. Let's go ahead if you have it. If you have yeah. a, like an actual system working, I haven't done yeah, my this, this part. Good. So uh, while Paul is bringing this up, uh, this is an, uh, an addition by Car Watts or Tim. Tim has added uh, a new graph to our energy dashboard, which is, um, I think, super helpful if you want to dive in into your. Um, individual devices. Well, Paul, do you have your screen yet? Let me see where is it. Yeah. Let me add you. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. And uh, on uh, the energy dashboard, we have the, the different sources, uh, like I have off peak and uh, peak hour, so I can show each day uh, which uh, proportion I use. And uh, at the bottom, we have this graph. Yeah, and of the individual now, device totals, right? Yeah, yeah and it's a total uh, on the for, whole the, for this one. Yeah, for the whole period. And now we have a detail, so you can see on each day uh, the proportion and the, the energy used by uh, every device. So, for example, on on this view, you can see when I charge my uh, mm. my electric yeah, car. You the, charge your car uh, about <laughs> every four days. Like there's always yeah. a four-day gap. Yeah, and if you if if you change it, like you you want it for per year. Nice. Oh, it's That's a lot good. of data, but uh, yeah, <laughs> you will see. For for example, here it's uh, the heating of my house. I have electric heating, so you can mm -hmm. see. Uh, yeah. And the uh, show height, uh, the legend works, right? In this one, yeah, yeah. If if you want to compare and you don't want the eating, yeah, you can uh, you can see. Uh, 
as a washing machine for uh, every device you track, uh, you can you can show it, and it also work uh, per day, I think. Nice. Yeah. I think so this can be. Oh, so go ahead. Yeah. Oh no, go but ahead. what I think is really nice, just the different ways we can slice the data and the way you get insight in this, mm -hmm. and it's yeah, it's really good to get insight into your energy. Yeah. yeah. I got a screenshot today from uh, JLo actually, which I put into release notes. If I may, I will yeah, that one's like put good. them yeah. on put them yeah. on the screen because I think that really showcases what is happening. Um, in his case, you can clearly see when uh, the dishwasher ran today, mm. um, and that is something you could not see in the past, right? It's now pretty clear on the screenshot <laughs> that the dishwasher was running here and the oven here um, and this is data or at least something you could not clearly see before so i think this is part of being able to see the individual devices over time and learn how and when you're using energy and make decisions based on that to like i don't know reduce your footprint your carbon footprint or maybe like just reducing your energy uses to save a little a uh, little bit of money mm -hmm. is fine too right uh, but yeah i think that is um really cool of this addition that cowards made uh, just this little thing shown here. I think this is beautiful. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much, Carlos. Uh, one yeah. thing that we want to make sure when it comes to like data visualization is that we're not just adding graphs because it's pretty, right? Every graph <laughs> will provide you like a unique insight. Like in this particular graph that we added, it's to show like, it's like if any anomaly, any spikes that you noticed, you can actually isolate that device very easily. Yeah, yeah definitely. I saw this uh, this question, which I want to answer. Where does Home Assistant save all the solar data? So Home Assistant, you know, a lot of stage changes happening all the time. If you have sensor data, it's like updating all the time. Home Assistant will automatically keep track of all your sensor data. By default, we store it up to 10 days, after which we throw it away. However, don't worry. While sensor data is being captured, we keep track of uh, every five minutes, we group it up. So we see like the last five minutes for this sensor, what was the lowest value, what was the highest value, what was the average value. And we keep that also for 10 days, after which we also throw it out. But don't worry, because all the five minutes are being rolled up into hourly. So for every hour, we know what the lowest, highest, and average value was. So even if you go further back in history, you can still look at like the energy usage on an hourly basis. And because it's an hourly basis, the sensor values it's not that much data, so we just keep it forever. We never throw it away. Now, we actually, there's a little bit more to it. We don't just, for certain sensor values, it's min, max, and average. But if it's a metered uh, value, for example, your energy usage, we actually know that this is a metered value. So for the hour interval, for the five-minute interval, we actually track the growth of the, so how much did it increase over that period of time? So because the amount of time that immediate value is increasing is actually how much energy you're using in that five minute slot or that hour slot. And that's that's the basically how this whole graph, the data of this graph is all built up. And we store the data forever, right? So you go back like a whole year data, Paul can just show that because boom, it's right there. Now, and oh. It's have, stored oh. on your device, right? Just your data. We yes. don't store it. You yeah, store. you have access to this data like the way you want it, right? So obviously we have some cool graphs. Carbos just added another one. Thank you for that. This is awesome. But of course, maybe you have a great idea. Now, of course, uh, one way you could do this is you, uh, you know, open uh, the GitHub and you start editing and contributing a graph to Home Assistant so that everyone can benefit. But maybe sometimes you just want a little play with it, right? Now, in the <laughs> last release, we added this great new feature. You might remember because it was pretty big. A download CSV button from the history panel. Huge. So <laughs> you go to the history panel, select your favorite entity, select your favorite period in time. Boom, download. You have the data. Throw it in Excel. You can play with it. Now, car was this time, again, uh, Tim has been very busy. When you're on the energy dashboard, we've added this same feature. So now if you have like, oh, I want to quickly look into my energy data and maybe hook it up to some other data sources, do some processing on it and myself, in the energy dashboard, there's now a download button. The CSV format is the same as for the history panel, but it has an extra column. Um, no, it's not the same format. Sorry, I said it wrong. It has a, a bunch of extra columns. It looks a bit like the energy dashboard, so there's columns for different times. 
that are visible, but we also include the category. So you know how the energy data source is categorized. So, And it downloads what you see, right? So if you select like yeah. the year, then you get the whole year of data? Yes. Holy crap. Yeah. Okay. The one That's thing we didn't thing. do is that if you do compare data, we're only downloading the current data and not the old data. Right. Okay. Yeah. So this is really cool because you can just plug it in and just, you know, go do some Excel magic or whatever is your favorite data processing tool. And uh, yeah, go with that. Oh, darn, that actually works. Oh, that's 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 just a stupid conclusion. I could have expected it to work, but still it works. Yeah, That's awesome. That's truly really awesome, by the way. Uh, I've seen a lot of people being very happy with the CSV export. So having this here makes a lot of sense. I initially thought you made it, Paulus, because you made like the awesome CSV feature in the beginning, but it turns out Car was actually added this one to the energy yeah. dashboard. Yeah. He he beat me to it. <laughs> yeah, Paulus was busy with the script one. <laughs> All right, that was the... yeah. <laughs> hacking away right. on my one hour project. <laughs> yeah. Really cool. Um yeah. What else do we have this release? Yeah. Are we going to open Are the release in, notes? Uh, we haven't even open. opened the release notes yet. Yeah. I know, but I, I know Our what's next. Can I show a really cool thing? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. What do you have? It's not exactly related to our release, but you can find it if you update stealth. Um, so right now, <laughs> if you go to a command line, oh. you see the old Home Assistant uh, uh, ASCII art here, which I think the top row is missing because the T's are not like are open at the top. But mm -hmm. what's really cool is that, check this out. Okay, I'm going to share this window. It's really exciting. The, the newest version of Home Assistant. I know where you're going, man. This is cool. <laughs> there is. The, Damn, the new, logo new logo is finally in. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You ask us for it, we deliver. <laughs> ask yard logos. That's the thing nowadays. Yeah. It is, by the way, beautiful. I, I'm prolonging back to the days of IRC and BBSs and such. That, that I feel was like the a one hour again. <laughs> that, that's the one hour project for me. It's like Sunday morning. I don't know what to do. Let's test some fun with SK art. So that they there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Really nice. all right, that's all I have for intermission. <laughs> intermission. Thanks to you, Frank. Okay, I'm looking. I'm as quickly trying to scroll through the release notes if you have everything. But there's something quite big still here which we should talk about. And I'm before we dive into like the the actual release notes, which we should. I think I'm going to show this one too. Um, and this one, I think I'm going to do on my own dashboard. Um, hold on, hold on. I'm. Uh, we are so prepared always. Oh, it's unbelievable. Uh, let me share the step instead. So um, I just installed. So bear with me here. I made a new tab, drag and drop. Um, the thing that I wanted to talk about and tell you about is the new features we've added to Assist this release. Because Assist has mm -hmm. a bunch of new um, capabilities, things, sentences, intents. It understands you better. Yeah, it has more things it can respond to. Um, so how can I assist? So one of the things that I really love that has been added is you can now start your hack and clear. Yeah. yeah. That is, by the way, amazing. So uh, start. Um, my vacuum cleaner is called Mama, by the way. Uh, don't get me wrong. Thanks. Start is a clean in the background. I don't know if you hear it, but definitely noises will be made right now. Um, so, um, yeah. Return mama to base. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's, by the way, awesome to shout if your mom is, at ho yeah. is, is visiting to, uh, to ask her to start cleaning and something starts cleaning. So that's... <laughs> that's it's uh, it's actually really cool this release because we've added like a bunch of these like sentences yes. where we're just like we should just add them and like yeah so vacuums are there valves are there set position on valves uh, close valves we can um, a lot of Cur media player curtains also really good yeah. set, pos set position is actually really cool because you can say 
you know, change your curtains to like be half open uh, with your voice, which we pre previously couldn't do. So yeah, really a big catch up. And this is actually, this was all, we presented this also as uh, chapter six uh, of a uh, year-ish of the voice. No, I just voice yeah. nowadays. Um, but yeah, that was like two weeks ago. Um, yeah, so this, I'm really stoked for this. It landed and you can now use it. Um, it's but, a Martian year. Yeah. It's a Martian year. <laughs> But even bigger, I think, in this cycle is the uh, um, control of audio devices. Yeah. I really like that. Media players. You can now control media players too, uh, skipping a song, pausing, playing, things mm -hmm. like that. So that is absolutely lovely. Yeah. And this one, we are not done yet, right? So we are now doing like skip to next song. You have to name each media player yet. The, our goal is going to be that you can say skip song and it should just find the media player in that area that's playing and then skip that one. Uh, that will be hopefully coming next release. Yeah. yeah. That's about the new assist. Bunch yeah, of and if you, miss, if you missed the stream from two weeks ago, we actually oh. launched um, a new wake word uh surface model that can run on an esp device so previously wake words would run inside home assistant which we're limiting on a raspberry pi 4 to like four or five wake words at simultaneously <laughs> now it runs on an esp32 s3 device which means you can have as many as you want which is like preparing us to like you know create better and more advanced uh voice assistant hardware so really stoked about that uh, model if you have missed that announcement definitely check the stream from a couple of weeks ago and do we, do we know how many languages support this new uh, sentence for now? With the new sentences, I definitely know that French and Dutch and obviously English have been updated. I know that um, there was an intent update that just missed the boat. So mm -hmm. Friday, <laughs> the point one release is going to have definitely better language support, but it's already like uh, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's the website we can look at, but we'll not bury all the like nitty gritty details right now. <laughs> there should be. The, the, I think most of them are updated, and there are a bunch of updates landing on that point one release. Yeah. that's for sure. But it lo it looks in general that we can use some help if you want to help, like yeah. translating these intents and sentences. Please, um, yeah. yeah, help with that. So if you're wondering if there's a valid uh, list of valid sentences, the easiest way to actually try it out is to open the Assist Dev Tool. So inside Home Assistant, we actually have a Dev Tool. You can put your sentences in. We tell you how we understand it. We can, uh, and then, yeah, work with that. So, and if you then see that the sentence is not supported, you can actually come to us and uh, contribute it. So, yeah, that's a really neat uh Neat little tool. I can actually quickly show it. Oh, like if you say turn nice. off the spaceship, then you can see that like, well, turn on, um, it matched this sentence. There was however an unmatched slot because I don't have a something that can be turned on that is called a spaceship um, yeah. or like turn on the lights. Um, you can parse this. It will say, well, it is also didn't match because there was no area passed in. And like we require an area to be passed in for something as ambiguous as turn on the lights, turn on the lights in the living room. That one uh, will work. It matches the living room area. And so this would have worked. So this is how you can easily quickly see, will my sentence work? Yes or no. I think someone's asking, like, is there a way to see the available, all the available commands for like a normal user? For normal users? No, no, not yet. Um, no, we don't really on. have a, this, we've been thinking about the idea of that when you go to a device info page in Home Assistant to kind of show some sentences you can say, but well, we haven't built it. So, <laughs> yeah. That's so maybe, yeah. It's a one hour project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, the, the thing, the reason why assist moves sometimes oh. a bit slow, like you could be like, why didn't we have like a, a start vacuum cleaner command before is that 
you don't just have to build the underlaying like you know logic to handle a sentence command, but we actually have to then work with all the language leaders to get all the commands translated, and we need to gather all those sentences. So even though you know why do we only have like a couple of languages now at the start of this release? It's because well all the language leaders and we have over 50 different language leaders that are working on these languages they have to catch up and implement the new logic yeah if you want to help out join our chat uh yeah. there is a, a voice channel there a deaf voice channel even um yeah. and reach out like if you want to help to translate those sentences in your language or make your uh, your language better supported by assist yes please yeah. please do reach out it's you, it is this isn't rocket science there you don't have to be a, a full-blown programmer or coder to be able to contribute to this one um so yes please uh, by all means reach out uh just you know doing a few assist questions i guess can, any chance we get a way to send the room through the api uh, we don't currently have that option. I would suggest that if you're interested in that, uh, just implement and use the Wyoming protocol because then you will be able to get the full experience, give, give the best experience to the users to integrate your thing that you're building as a voice assistant. Yeah. Ah, and this this one actually, uh, Mr. Wearman Adventures. Um, yes, our recommended hardware is the esp32 s3 box 3 which is currently sold out um yes the one that malena is holding up the um, it's coming back though i was in touch with espressive they're saying that mouse and digi key should be uh, restocked soon and then later there will be more general availability um, i think this is happening in april so yeah bear with us one more month we sadly are using this as a development platform in a period where they are transitioning between versions. So they sunset their old version, they're introducing the S3 box three, but they're having a slow rollout. Yeah, so sure. sadly our, uh, yeah, our users cannot just all benefit now from the latest stuff we're building. Hopefully next month that should be uh, better. Things keep moving. Yeah. That's good. Boom, boom. All right. Um, up for the next one. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't have the release notes in front of me, so yeah. I, 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 I'm not. I'm going to try to explain you what feature is coming. Yeah, and I'm you, going you to like try to sentence yeah. without like struggling and falling over myself. So you can. We have built it. We've built a feature that allows you to disable the remote enabling of the Home Assistant remote UI via the Home Assistant Cloud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This was so, correct, right? So it let's is correct, translate yeah. this one. <laughs> let's, uh, no, I let's explain. So when you use Home Assistant Cloud, we offer you an end-to-end -end encrypted remote connection into your house, which means that even if you're normally Home Assistant runs at home, that means no one can access it because it's uh, behind your router. But it also means that when you're not at home, you cannot access it. Now, to... Back in the old days, we would always tell people just open ports to your router, get an LSSL certificate, get a DNS name, and it was complicated and it really limited like the amount of people that could use Home Assistant because you know using Home Assistant while you're away from home is needed, right? You sometimes want to check in in your house. So when we launched Nabucasa, we knew this was the kind of feature that we wanted to offer people. So Home Assistant Cloud offers you end-to-end -end encrypted connection. It means that. You're away from home, you open your phone, you see your Home Assistant instance, you can control it the way you want to. Now, sometimes you just want to disable this because you feel like there shouldn't be any way right now for anyone to get into my Home Assistant instance. So we allow, we added the option to, inside Home Assistant, turn off your remote connection. But then when the remote connection is turned off and you accidentally go out of your house, some people were like, my remote connection is turned off because they were at an automation for this maybe. And they're like, I do want to access my home assistant. So we added an option to enable your remote connection to be turned back on so you could log back in. But then there were people that were then on top of this, and this is why feature requests are never ending stories, that were like, well, but I don't want my home assistant instance to listen to requests to come back online remotely. I want to be able to turn that off. So that's what we said. Yeah. It is so hard to explain. <laughs> like, I, 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 I've, I've, 
I've lost, like I've really practiced on telling that sentence, by the way. But to show you what it looks like, uh, we now have a little advanced options here inside the Home Assistant Cloud panel inside of the settings panel. And uh, under remote control, there's an advanced options you can extend. And uh, well, here's the little toggle, allow external activation of remote control, which means that previously you could log in via the Nabucasa account page and enable basically this switch from remote. But when you do this and this, you can never like access your home system remotely again, unless you turn this on. Yeah, if from inside your home or from anywhere, you can access your instance directly and not from your Nabucasa account page. Um, yeah, and it's, it's cool. It. I think it's like you know, people might be thinking like, when would you like automate your remote connection? And actually, here James Moss has the, the this is the right example that people will disable remote connections into the smart home when they're all home because nobody yeah. needs this feature. So why would you have it uh, enabled? And, I think that's really cool. I mean, this, we're a smart home, right? Like we we build like things that are smart. People want to automate it. So, yeah, that uh, that's all possible. I'm just reading. I'm just reading Lewis his comment. Like that's the thing about feature requests. I think he's going on. <laughs> Can I request a feature to remotely turn on and off? The feature to remotely turn on or off the connection. Yeah. You can request it. <laughs> Yeah, that's the right answer. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God, I, right. I, uh, this turned out pretty okay. Like, even though it's like so many disable, enable, enable, disable remotely, remotely, remote UI. Um, so that's good. Happy. So, Somebody's asking here, like, hey, if my Nabucasa account is compromised, do they get access to Home Assistant? No, no. because Home Assistant cloud is end-to-end -end encrypted. It means that Nabucasa only controls how to get access to your Home Assistant instance, but Nabucasa cannot access your Home Assistant instance. So you still need to log in with your own username and password. And because it's end-to-end -end encrypted, uh, we at Nabucasa are not even able to see it. So um, no. That's the thing, right? Even if somebody was able to log into your Nabucasa account and would and be able to enable remote control to your home assistant instance, they still had to log in. So, um, yeah, this is. Um, I think it's a nice addition. If you really don't like this feature, then you cannot disable it. I think that's fine. Yeah. That's one, one, cool to, one cool thing I want to one cool thing I want to note about the UI design here is like uh, Matthias. Have been looking at like all the different settings that we have, and we realized that some settings are really at for expert advanced users, and then we decided to start hide, like um, making the interface a little less cluttered by putting some of these under advanced options now. Yeah, so that is not like too many things overwhelming you when you open this settings page. Definitely, yeah, that's really nice. This. We see this streamlining happening throughout the UI, right? Like everywhere we see, ah, uh, this is actually kind of complicated. Let's let's make it more accessible. All right, um, let's dive into the release notes because this one I think is better. Finally, <laughs> hey, we have some written text too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So this, uh, this is a feature uh, which is more aimed toward the advanced users that really like working with templates. If you ever worked with templates and send out like notification messages about some state of a sensor in your home, you're probably very familiar with doing if else kind of constructs to send a translated message based on the state of a sensor somewhere. For example, well, in this example shown here, if there's movement in the backyard, you could send different messages. And what um, uh, what Piotr, 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 I think I said it right, right? That he, he added a, a new template function, state translated. And with this template function, you can actually get the translated human readable state message back from any entity and then use that. 
for example, in that notification or for anything at all you like uh, to build templates from. Um, so in this little example right here on, on screen, uh, there's the state of the sun. Uh, Sun.sun gives you below underscore horizon, which is the raw state value, right? Yeah. Uh, and in this case, movement backyard, it's on, which is the state of the binary sensor, which is lowercase on. But if you use state translated, uh, it can turn that into human readable language. Uh, so in this case, for the same movement backyard, it will say detected. It will return detected instead. And for some that sound, it will say below horizon. However, there's more to this. If you have set your Home Assistant instance to a different language, if you go into your settings screen and change the base language of your Home Assistant instance to something else, for example, Dutch, uh, and you use this method, it will translate it to Dutch as well. This, uh, this is the part I really like, right? This, that's cool. this will make it possible to have translations inside your blueprints, for example. Yep. Yeah, for notification, it's very useful. Can I show a quick quick demo? Because I thought this yes, I know you pl you played with it. Yeah, I know. Go ahead. If yeah, you have one because like this is really good for like if you like. You know, if you're not an English speaker, which actually, right, I think like only 30 to 40 percent of Home Assistant users uses uh, are like live in like English speaking countries. So a lot of language like are being used in Home Assistant. So one thing like that is really cool is that like, OK, uh, let's show you. Um, so for example, my Dungeons and Dragons here, um, which is. Right. For example, this is a, a weather report, right? And it what the, this really is saying, right? This is in Chinese, and it is uh, it says today is raining. But since uh, currently, if I look at the setting, is using state, then it just give me the text uh, rainy, which doesn't really help, right? If like other people in my apartment doesn't use English, right? So, but now I can just do state translated, and now. It becomes a complete Chinese sentence. It looks and reads so much better together, and you can make a, a, a user interface that works, right? Completely yeah. in your own like, or in your own tongue. So and it, this is actually what you're showing here. Not only the state translator is really cool, but the fact that I don't know if many people know it, but you can actually use templates in your markdown cards. And they will live update as the states update. So as this weather is being updated inside Home Assistant, the Madalena's front end will refresh with the latest translated state, which is just mm -hmm. and it's push, right? It's not like, oh, every five seconds. It's like, no, the, the second the state changes, boom, it's right there. Yeah, let's try that. Uh, if I add a light, right? Translated um, light dot. Uh, Oh, auto this is kind of fun. I'm not sure if people yeah. knew that. We have that too. Yeah. So, oh, uh, did I type yeah. something? Oh, yeah, I missed a, it missed a bracket. Uh, yes. Sorry. I was muted. I was shouting. <laughs> <laughs> there. So, right no. now, um, <laughs> that light is off. But what if I turn that light on? Let's see if I can find the light. There it is. Oh, oh there it boom. They changed from off to on. And now you can drag and drop this away, you know? Oh, like... yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can drag and drop this right there. <laughs> like, I mean, this is just really cool how all these features are coming together, right? Like real time state updates, templates, powerful translations, drag and drop. Amazing. Super nice. Super Thank you. Nice. Oops. Hey, let's see. Did we have everything yet? I think we're no, no. Oh, oh no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So before we dive into this, uh, I'm I want to go out and apologize to Bidraco actually because like I write the release notes right, and the thing is, and what may, many people don't know is. B. Drago is like, he's on a mission to make Home Assistant the fastest <laughs> there is. It is, it is it, no, but what he does is amazing. And he is 
on it almost i feel like like i don't know like 24 7 oh he's always busy with like optimizing home assistant and he is he has been very important into um the improvements of our our performance and our our speed and how home assistant responds and reacts and stability he has been a very very important factor of this in the past well, almost two years i guess almost i something like that but the thing is he is doing this constantly all day and the thing that we can tell you about it because it's always highly technical is like it's faster again <laughs> and that's really hard to write in a release notes but he is doing an, a serious amount of work and we yeah. often do not write about that so um and more more often me because i write in release notes right um so from from my perspective i wanted to say sorry for that bidraco because i i really value what you do there and um yeah in that side like this release it's what he did now is that this is it is next level yeah and this this is actually only the start so yeah <laughs> um, he identified like something that was like blocking and he was able to solve this but we've actually identified a ton more and you know over the last <laughs> I was talking with Nick, his real name is Nick, and I was talking with Nick uh, yesterday or two days ago, and that we're actually more excited than already looking forward to the next beta cycle because we want to see how much speed up we're having squeezed out even more in the next yeah. release. But yeah, this is this is really cool. And actually, I want to share like a cool anecdote. Um, so Nick was visiting uh, Brooklyn, and like both Marlene and I, we live in Brooklyn, and we were visiting Marlene's house. And one of the first things that we did, what Nick did when he came, is that he ran a profile on Madalena's Home Assistant instance. <laughs> and then he like, <laughs> he saw like a bunch of stuff that was just not right. It was like too slow or being called too often. And then like, you know, we spent some time and like all that stuff has been fixed now. And, you know, this is just constantly, we look at profiles of instances that are big and are very expensive. and see what they are doing and seeing where they hit the bottleneck and we fix that yeah and now for this release home assistant boots just twice as fast like come on so the what actually is interesting that it's not only the booting twice as fast the thing that we fixed actually will solve a lot of weird startup issues people might have seen where they saw timeouts that they didn't expect or they looked at integration times that were way longer that didn't make sense and all that stuff should now in this release be partially addressed next release fully addressed um and it's it's cool because we saw for example sometimes bluetooth startup timing out and it was like that doesn't make sense like that should be super fast and now we know why now it's been solved so yeah it's it should be fast you you'll notice it when you restart home assistant which we only do for updates nowadays anyway but when you do it will be super fast It's awesome. Thank you so much. It's yeah. I have no other words, uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Even if this is not in release notes, please remember he's probably done tons of stuff. <laughs> it's just cool. Yeah. Uh, oh, somebody's asking if this is only for Home Assistant OS. No, all nope. performance updates are all for Home Assistant Core, so everyone yeah. will benefit from it. I mean, there has been updates for Home Assistant OS and Home Assistant Supervisor. I think the, the backup feature got twice as fast in the last release. That was thanks to uh, Bidraco as well. Um, so obviously, performance updates are being done across the whole system, but most of it is in core because that's where most of the work is happening, right? The operating system truly only exists to run Home Assistant. So, yeah. Yep. All right. Let's see what's left because we have I don't know worthy changes. Um, there are not too many this time, by the way, because like most of the time consumed be refactoring, speed updates, something with dungeons and dragons. Um, sorry, drag and drop. That's a running gag internally almost at this point. ASCII Everybody's logo. talking about dragging and dungeons and dragons. ASCII logos, yes, not to forget about ASCII logos. <laughs> So um, the climate entity has a, a new service available, which is climate.toggle, which turns it off if it's on and on if it's off. 
sounds really simple, but it's now there. So thank you so much I mean, for adding that. This is nice because I have, for example, my uh, climate entity is just heating and off. And so now I can just toggle it. And... Yeah, for me the same. Yeah. Uh, welcome in the Dutch world, why right? we only have <laughs> heating. Um, basically. Matter lights now support transitions, uh, which I really enjoy, by the way. I think transitions, if you work with light and do automations with them and your light support dimming and transitions, use them. I think it eases when you turn them on and off. I think it's very pleasant to look at when that happens. Yeah, you know, that's actually something that I was thinking about the other day. We should probably have like a default transition of like half a second. It kind of makes it feel more natural. But um... yeah. I think Instead most of, of them do it nowadays by default if you don't send it. All right, that's true. But yeah, definitely cool. Um, well, CSVs we talked about. We heard you like downloading CSVs, so here we go. Um, ZHA, that is a, a thing, right? Last release, we did something with uh, the um, uh, device updates. Yeah. And that turned out to be... Oh, we had quite a bunch of reports, so it wasn't always that great, especially there were a bunch of devices that weren't behaving really well. Uh, we've learned, um, not going to uh, 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 call out brands, but there were some brands that are just less. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Well, for example, uh, yeah, that one. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, that didn't work out that well. Um, so what we what they did or what we did is we've stopped sending up updates. At some point, I believe we stopped doing that, and we refactored it, or at least Demacali and uh, probably refactored it um, to have a better version right now. So uh, this release ships a better, stable, more stricter and more robust update system for ZHA, and everybody should be happy and. Uh, to update their devices again, which is absolutely great. Um, in the same regard, my uplink now supports updating devices directly via Home Assistant. Nice. Which I always I love think is, that this. Yeah, these this. are great. And um, actually, the maintainer reached out to me just before the release saying, like, hey, you forgot a bunch because I did a lot more work there. Um, so this integration actually was released last release for the first time, which was a really bare bone integration uh, for for uh, for your uh, um, uh, water pumps. But now it's like a full-blown integration. It's not just a sensor. There are controls and many more things in there. So it's a much completer one. But yeah, the update entity stood out because i think that is a very important feature and good to see integrations yeah. to do that uh june hd you can now browse the media browser on the left side menu there's a media button and you can go through your media and play media on your june hd players if you want um we've seen some people being fans of bring um bring now brings in God, it's, <laughs> That is so it now brings in like the your recently completed or your recently shop list things uh, as a list, which is kind of nice. Um, oh, and this one, by the way, Tim has been busy. Uh, Car Watts, he has been busy. The um, dialogue to adjust long term statistics now has an automated outlier detection. So you can click on show me the outliers and it will pop up. Nice. I almost it's, feel like we should show that actually, because it's really hard to explain what this is. And I'm not sure if I have one. Uh, Let me check. Do I have? Oh, uh, I have one if you want. Yeah, go. Yeah, I'm not sure. That is, by the way, a absolute. Yeah, it's on DevTools. Yeah, on DevTools, you you have like uh, you you can see if uh, there is an issue with your uh, statistics, you can uh, fix issue, and you can, uh, for example, this entity has no stand, and you can delete it, and you can also click on this one and adjust statistics, and then you can click now on. Before you have to search for every every day uh, and every not ideal. <laughs> yeah. And now you can click here 
and it will find all, all the old layer uh, for your, uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, and then you can adjust them, right? So you click on a statistic and you say, well, this value should be this. The, the cool thing, especially with, for example, energy, if you have something like a recorded energy, you can find in find your weird spikes there, right? The ones that you actually want to get out because the, it was an issue or something happened. Um, so if you adjust them, you can actually quickly find those spikes um, and adjust them accordingly, which is uh, pretty nice. This is, you know, the adjust statistics dialogue was also a one hour project. <laughs> <laughs> we might like improve on that one, maybe one day, yeah. <laughs> but still nice. I think this makes it a lot more usable at this point. Yeah, but so, it can be useful to show graph or something like that to display the OKR. Okay, yeah. yeah. Definitely. All right. Um, we have a bunch of new integrations this release as well. Uh, we have April Air, which are thermostats. So if you have one, you can use it. Then we have, I'm going to butcher this one, Husqvarna. Let's go. I'm going, I don't know. No. Hush, Which, hush. Where are they from? Husqvarna. Husqvarna. Anyways, if you have one of those lawnmowers, you can now mow your land using Home Assistant. Your lawn is pretty, pretty nice then. Huh. Microbees landed. Um, they have uh, uh, other smart home plugs, wall plugs, wall switches, things like that, uh, which you can integrate with Home Assistant and control them. That's cool to see. We have Weatherfall Cloud, um, which I found remarkable. So I, I looked into that one a bit because we have uh, support for Weatherflow locally. Um, <laughs> and now we have a cloud integration of like, Wait, wait a second. It's basically the same data. Yeah. I, you know, it's interesting because we have, I don't know, I think somewhere last year, right, we allowed to have multiple integrations for different APIs if they get the same data. So basically, we open up to do like a local and a cloud, or it was actually meant to have different distinct feature or devices that have like are under the same brand. So you have a Google brand that has Google Sheets, is not the same integration as the Google Calendar integration, for example. But yeah, we see now a couple of times where people are adding a cloud integration. Of course, almost is about choice. If you have a use case for this, because maybe you want to pull in your neighbor's cloud information, or maybe <laughs> you want to have your parents' weather station pulled in, these kind of stuff, nah, it's work. possible. So go for it. Yeah. Do it. There's uh, one really good reason for this as well, is that the Tempest weather station works only, this is a little bit technical, only works over UDP. Some people have experienced issues with communicating mm -hmm. that with that one locally over UDP. I don't know if I Docker or special setups or network setups that are special. I don't know. Um, so if that is an issue for you, you have a workaround too. You could use the cloud instead. Um, so I guess that works. But yeah, it's all about choice, eventually. And then um, new in this list, uh, but not like unfamiliar. Like this is... An, only it's webmin it still exists uh webmin is a software package to manage servers basically nice i mean yeah. this is uh this is what i think is really cool about like it's old. the home assistant community like we do not rely on like webmin adding an integration we don't rely on the home system core developers or nabucasa to add an integration in this case there's just a user who has a need to see their webmin data and home assistant is willing to put in the time builds it makes it available to everyone and now we all can you know integrate our webmin device and maybe there will be somebody stopping by using home assistant in a month or two and be like oh i wish i could integrate my webmin boom it works and now you can do automations maybe you want to send a notification to your or turn on a light whenever something happens in webmin and all those features are unlocked by just pulling the data in so really cool yeah these are all contributed by the way that's just cool in general it's good to see um going through going strong uh, we have a couple of uh, new uh feature integrations which are basically helping you to find them it doesn't provide something new but 
Well, some cases they do a little bit, but we have a few brands now that are supported by other existing integrations, um, including there's literally no month going by at this point. O power. A new one for O power. <laughs> <laughs> this is unbelievable. Uh, I almost thought this month would be O powerless, but man, there's one. Well, it All looks right. like Energy Zero is going strong too. With, uh, yeah, it's similar, right? Yeah. Zonder so, gas and some sun, both of All these integrations like O power, Energy Zero, they are platforms where you collect energy usage data, aggregates it, and then companies that like electricity companies send all their data to Opower, Opower generates statistics and provides this back to the user to gain insight in it. And actually the Opower integration is really cool because it almost works across the United States and it will import your historical data into home assistance. So you can start using the energy dashboard. It's not real time, but at least you'll be able to see the data. Like what did I use last week? Where did it go? Like it's uh, yeah, it works. All right, last but not least, Pilux. Only one. Also, only, only one. Yeah, there was another one that was referred to in the beta, unfortunately, or before the beta. There was an issue with it. But um, yeah, only one, Pilux. But still, one move to the UI. Nice. nice. One day, everything will be moved to the UI, and then there will be none. <laughs> yeah. That would be very nice. Last but not least, backwards incompatible changes. Uh, not too many this release. Um, if you have any of these, please check them out. JuiceNet is a specific one. It has been removed uh, because, well, the API is no longer available and rendering the integration useless. Yeah, that's a pity. That's a pity. Um, otherwise, yeah. That's basically it for this release. Uh, there are a bunch of changes. If you're a custom integration developer, um, there are a bunch of changes listed here. They link to our developer web blog. Um, that blog has a lot of information on what is going on in the development environment of Home Assistant, uh, what is changing and what you should take into account. Uh, keep up with that. If you're uh, a custom integration developer, this can make your life easier um, and you know upfront what's happening. Um, so check these out for sure. Yeah, that sums up the release, I guess. Yeah, nice. sums up. It was all about Dungeons and Dragons. And now, just this last thing. Hey, Nabu, turn on the release. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not that far off. Looking at it, it could be in 15 minutes-ish. It should be available. Looks good right now. You want to show it? Like, show what you're looking at. Like, I don't think people have the kind of dashboard that we have to see our builds because building home assistant is not a simple process, right? We support all the way back uh, to Raspberry Pi 3. We have like all at every different board that we support, we build a unique image for. So there's a Raspberry Pi 4 image, there's a Raspberry 5 image now because we support Raspberry Pi 5. There's, of course, home assistant green, blue, yellow. We keep supporting all these uh, boards because we are not in the game of dropping support. When we add support for board, we're keeping it around for as long as possible, for as long as it is uh, workable. And so, yeah, we haven't uh, dropped many support. We had to drop some 32-bit in the past. Uh, but yeah, we it does mean that whenever we do a new build, it has to build all those images. It takes some time. Luckily, GitHub slash Microsoft, they're very nice to us. They give us a lot of access to a lot of build agents uh, for free. and yeah, they are just building. Yeah. As you can see, we had two failed attempts, uh, which caused us our delay. Um, we're now working on the third attempt, which uh, Robert triggered. Um, yeah, and right now, the, there are three architectures done already. We're waiting for the ARM architectures. Um, and after that, we can start building the actual releases and shipping them. Yeah. But this is the longest part, which uh, generally would spinny spinny indeed, uh, which would generally take up until one and a half to one hour 50 ish and then the rest of the parts are pretty darn fast so um uh, this is just the the waiting game we're currently playing and uh, we're looking at um and this is just one of the many builds right this is the build we're all waiting for uh, but we have many many <laughs> yeah. many jobs running um in general like i can give you a peek at that but <laughs> all things that are running. <laughs> this well, it's all cute because well, there's 
everything is waiting. There's such stuff in progress here. Every time a new what? change is accepted into Home Assistant, and we accept a lot of changes each release, we do a whole build of running the whole field test suite. We have like tens of thousands of tests that are run every time we make a change to make sure that everything in Home Assistant keeps working and runs perfectly. And yeah, you can see that here in this list that Frank is showing, which is, it's fascinating to think about that, like even one line of change, even fixing a comment, we're going to make sure that all the code still works as expected. Because what happens sometimes is that you change something on the left side of Home Assistant and then somewhere on the right, something breaks. And we want to prevent that. And so, yeah, we want to make sure that all edge cases are tested for. So we have a full on test suite that will help us with this. Yep. So it's definitely in a pipeline. Oh, that is, by the way, Slim him. That's a good point. Yeah. Please hit the thumbs up. It, it will make the build go faster, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, it already fixed one. Like there's already yeah. one finish now. It's See, it helps. Click, click, click. <laughs> Keep... <laughs> See, <laughs> look, it helps. Yeah. Right in front of your face. It works. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, thanks for liking the video. <laughs> <laughs> the liking helps. There we go. I actually have to uh, to review, uh, but it's now building the machines there. So this uh, this will go fast. It should be available in fifteen minutes, less than fifteen minutes. Nice. Now Good. a whole lot of jobs start. Anyways, this is how it looks a little bit in the background. Yeah. Um, now you've seen it. Right. So, what else is new? We have to, we had this release. We uh, we shipped a new home system operating system. I already just mentioned it, Raspberry Pi 12, faster backups. We also mentioned um, the Verge is having a smart home week, and they listed uh, their favorite smart home devices. And this little boy was the number two on their list. So, very Ooh. cool. Very cool. Uh, also, on the poster behind you. Behind oh yes! Like, oh, yeah. The post behind you is beautiful. <laughs> I mean, this is a really cool. This is actually so. This is the the picture that's on the on the box, and then uh, we made this really cool poster out of it. Nice. Actually, I, I have the ones for the blue and the yellow too. I don't know if I can. I'm gonna show it. Yeah. Oh, making sure my whole house doesn't break down. This is the blue. <laughs> oh. And uh, I mean, I need to like hang this, of course, but of course, that I'm too busy for. Wow, <laughs> <that's>... <laughs> but, uh, wow. Yeah, you must be in the same house as me. Um, somehow, this house never finishes. That oh yeah, any new gadgets? For me, I've I've been skiing. Well, I think I it's a IKEA, IKEA yeah, one. That's the IKEA yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that one is so not IKEA being sold anymore, I believe. If they are still in stock, you should get them. Right. It's the holiday special. Yeah. Yeah, Paul has bought two of them. That's true. I have uh, one here. One somewhere in the box because that's how I generally end up with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody's asking, can we get the poster somewhere? Um, well, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, we, <laughs> I mean, we don't have a way to do fulfillment for all that stuff. So no, we, we could open source them, maybe. Yeah. Like Pad would be fitting. Yeah. 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 I did. I bought, I bought actually something cool. I can I can show you guys. I bought a really Another thick cable. USB cable that is like not like it's like three dollars from AliExpress, and it does nothing <laughs> but being very thick. So normally USB cables are very thin, but I kind of want to make a fashion statement, right? So this is a very thick blue one. You know, like this is a. Does it mean, transfer data? Like that's yeah, the first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this this is the look how thick it is, right? Like if you look next to the USB. It has a, a hat that can do like this, so it can even go sideways. And that's not everything. If I plug in my ESP, it yeah. has a blue LED. Oh. 
Hey, perfect AliExpress find. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't have that much stuff. I, I went into the threat and matter stuff. I bought uh, some of those e things that Marcel recommended and mm. like getting my first, like my toes, tipping my toes into the, the threat networks and meta networks a little bit. Mm. Um, that's kind of interesting, actually. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it, uh, yes, it works. I find the experience, and that not necessarily Home Assistant's fault, but in general with Threat, a little bit surprising as everything just works at first. That you pair, and then it works and looks, and then you move exactly. around, and then you actually don't know what it's connected to, right? It's not like you know it's connected to this Wi Fi network or something. But if it's connected to the wrong thing or thing you didn't expect, in my case, it was a pod, just one on my desk, and I moved the sensor upstairs, and then nothing worked. Um, so that this is a bit weird of experience. Maybe you need a better mesh network, or uh, I, I don't. Yeah, know. the the challenge with Thread is always like I mean, the devices are so small; they don't have a UI, they don't have any of no, those. No, exactly. Right? So. Only inside Home Assistant can we maybe give that feedback like this is connecting this thread network, but then you might have three devices that make up that thread network. So we need to kind of identify that even. And yeah, it's uh, this, this. I think it will take time. I think in in three years we'll have a really cool thread, like reliable. Probably. Network. I think uh, so. But, it was fun to dip my toes into this actually. Yeah. That, that's and I think if you have many of them, then it would probably be great. Right. Um, I want to uh, um, quickly share my screen again because it's done. So I'm going to actually take oh. you guys into like actual publishing it because well we've all been waiting for it, right? Uh, so here we go. This video. Yeah. Doing here it. Here we go. Boom. Approved. Oh, it was a problem at the gates. Uh. <laughs> oh. Of course. No, it's working. Yeah, so we have every time a release is built doesn't mean, of course, it goes live, right? So we first need to approve it, which what Frank just did. And so now uh, we're publishing it. Yeah, and this one is actually, this is Docker. Uh, so if you're running Docker, uh, you're in luck because that takes another 15 minutes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> needs to build like the meta images and push them out to Docker Hub and things like that. Um, uh, they, they're basically built, but they're building, building those uh, multi-architectural images uh, that are pushed out, those metadata images. Um, and this one will publish out it for everybody running Home Assistant OS and um, supervised. And yeah. that one, and here's PyPI as well, by the way, um, which if you run like old-fashioned Python, and yeah, and this is, I mean, this Cheap is really enough. cool, right? So, just like that, release a build, distribute it. Yeah, it happens every night automatically for our nightlies and yeah. uh, for our betas as well. Here, does it go? No, it's the pipe behind still. Yeah, I saw Cheap. a really fun question come in, and that's like, beyond the privacy issue, what's the top benefit of Home Assistant over the commercial alternatives? So if you use a Google, an Apple, Samsung, these are all systems where you can integrate a lot of stuff, but that data stays in their systems, right? The only way you can get data out of Google Home is to talk to a Google Home app, talk to Google Assistant, uh, the same with Apple devices. But if you, that means that for all your innovation and everything you wanna do with your smart home, you rely on people that are working at Google and Apple to provide that innovation. and these companies, they have a lot of different users from very beginning users to very advanced users. And so they are picking their features to add based on like what can have the most impact. Now, Home Assistant doesn't work that way. Home Assistant is fully open. It means that anyone can build anything on top of it. Yeah. It's actually, you know, that's why Home Assistant is a smart home platform and the others are just smart home software. And because Home Assistant is a smart home platform, you can make, if you don't like our automation engine, you don't like our dashboard, you don't like, whatever, you can actually find alternatives. There is a Node-RED for automation engine. There's a PyScript for automation engine. There are other people making dashboards and apps for Home Assistant. There's all these different things that just built on top of Home Assistant because Home Assistant is not a dead end. 
it is just an aggregator that helps you get the data to everything. And this really unlocks for us, like for users choice, right? So you have a choice what you want to use. You have a choice what kind of devices to use. And on top of that, Home Assistant has a really big community. Like I mentioned earlier in the stream, we are the second most active open source project in the world. 17,000 people built on Home Assistant in the last year alone. And that means that these people, they're building integrations, right? They're building stuff that can either be new features in the automation engine or they're integrating devices. And we don't rely on manufacturers to contribute to Home Assistant. We will do it ourselves as a community, right? So maybe there's a, I know, a light bulb, like it, uh, somebody's selling a light bulb somewhere and or maybe the manufacturer already went away because like they went bankrupt. If it has an API, Home Assistant will be able to talk to it and you can get it in Home Assistant. So instead of having to throw away old stuff because a cloud went offline and manufacturer stopped working, there are many times that Home Assistant can still use this. And so that means that you can still use it in your smart home. So that's a short summary why we are 100% better than anyone else. Yeah, it, that gives you tons of freedom. Yeah. Like you can really, really create and build whatever you can think of. And of course, it, we have a lot of freedom. You don't need that per se. Plus, like, no. Fabulous dashboards, drag and drop, energy management, super powerful home automation uh, engine as well. Big community. Or, yeah. Big and open community, and I what I really enjoy, especially from from my point of view, right? You're building stuff, and then putting it out, and what people do with what you create is sometimes way beyond what we have ever thought of, because it's just always built with flexibility and extensibility in mind. So people will extend and will use it in flexible ways, and that's always surprising. It's so cool to see. Like we have seen. People running brick factories using Home <laughs> Assistant. And yeah, that's, that was really cool. That was really cool, right? Or beer breweries, or I don't yeah. know what else. I did a lot amazing. of volunteer firefighters that use Home Assistant that when a signal comes in that they have to go to the station, it will flash their lights and prepare them to get ready to get to the fire station. So, yeah, you don't know what kind of use cases you're, we are unlocking, and it's just a lot of cool stuff. All right, yeah. this one is taking longer. I'm going to take down my screen sharing, by the way. Um, <laughs> but it should, it, it is pending. It could be there any minute now. It's waiting is the worst. Yeah. Two, two. It always takes longer if you look at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Look, somebody says that it's cute, um, which is kind of, I, I think there's so many other builds happening in Home Assistant that maybe these agents don't get priority right now. Yes, there's a lot yeah. of stuff happening. Interesting. Somebody is asking, if I would have 1 million euros to invest in Home Assistant, what would you do with it? Um, whoo, I think, um, yeah, I think what I would love to do is, on one hand, educate more people. I think that there needs to be more awareness that, like, we're putting stuff in our homes that are just going to, like, fall apart in five years. And I think there's more awareness to be created. I think if it comes to building things, I mean, like we're automations oh, are doing God. great. Uh, sorry, auto, dashboards are doing great. Automations are also could use some more work, and of course, there could be like, uh, you know, more people working oh, on it's it. Been doing it. great. If I had a, you know, one-time lump sum to in, invest in things, probably, you know, that when I look at, for example, Year of the Voice, what we did with Year of the Voice, that we hired people we invested a bunch of money to build technology that now lives on forever and we can build on top so if you look at a year of the voice which now has become voice could we throw a million dollars at it to make it even better and get to a place where we really can compete and if you look at it from that angle what other places do you feel like you know we need like just somebody to sit down and really build out the right thing and then we can kind of iterate on top I think there could be something going with like AI, although a lot of stuff is happening. So I don't know if that is the right time yet. That might be in five years when the cost has come down. Um, I don't know, maybe some cool hardware more like, uh, you know, I think we've talked about e-ink dashboards a bit, like that would be cool. Like maybe we can build that out, right? Um, but yeah. I'm more on board with California role there, by the way. He wants a big get together party. I think 
That sounds yeah. good to me too. <laughs> now, we do our own Woodstock in uh, somewhere in oh. Europe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good one, mate. Yeah. Home GPT. Oh, that sounds actually not that bad if you take it like that. Yeah, I mean, we are looking at AI stuff. We don't have anything to share yet. Um, we, a lot of people, when they think of AI, they want to do a voice system that responds with ChatGPT. It's too slow. It's just like when you move into a room <laughs> and you have to talk and wait eight seconds for the light to turn on, you could have like too three late. times shut up and turn on the light switch. But, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. I, I think uh, it's time to wrap up. The release is about to go live. If not now, within the next hour for sure. <laughs> next few minutes. <laughs> it is actually publishing. Here it we go. A thousand years later. All right. That's good. No, no. It's going. Look. Yeah. There it oh, goes. Ooh. This one goes fast. Yeah. There it goes. Hold yeah. on. If. Uh, yes. Ooh. Update. Boom. All right. Hit that update button. <laughs> hit the okay, like I'm button. Hit update. Um, I wish everyone here, if you want to support our work, please subscribe to Home Assistant Cloud by Nabucasa. It pays all our bills and that those of our colleagues. Uh, all the work we do is open source. We build out Home Assistant. It's super cool. Um, and tell your friends how cool and easy Home Assistant is. <laughs> Buy them a Home Assistant Green. Get them started. And uh, yeah, let's do that. Thank you. Yo. Bye.